Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. This month, Chicago peace activist Kathy Kelly begins a three-month federal prison term for her nonviolent civil disobedience at the paramilitary training school in Fort Benning, Georgia, formerly known as the School of the Americas. Her action was part of a larger protest that took place in November 2003, where thousands of protesters gathered and dozens of protesters crossed the line, entering the grounds of the School of the Americas, carrying symbolic representations of people who had lost their lives at the hands of school graduates. On March 22nd, just days before her federal prison sentence was to begin, we interviewed Kathy Kelly in a special two-part interview for Chicago Independent Television. Because I was among those who crossed the line this year, and you know, it wasn't my first season out. I've I've crossed lines before. Um, I know what to expect. But this year, it wasn't just a matter of being handcuffed and transported to a big warehouse where you would be processed. This year, in fact, the processing was um, quite aggressive, more so than I've ever experienced before. I was surrounded at the Station J processing spot by five military police um, the search was so aggressive. It was a matter of jabbing and poking and shoving and screaming. You know, look straight ahead, keep your eyes on the person in front of you, don't say anything. And so after a few minutes I thought, especially when I lost my balance when I was told to raise my leg again, and somebody's hands were inside my clothing, I thought, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to cooperate with this. So I, I said as much. I said, I'm sorry, I won't be able to cooperate with this any longer. I was thrown to the floor. I had a black eye after that. Uh, my wrists were cuffed, my ankles were cuffed, my wrists and ankles were tied together. Somebody was kneeling on me and referring to me as this, as an expletive, begins with an F. And um, that persisted and, and I couldn't get a full breath and I thought, I really need to let somebody know. So as best I could, I was saying, I, I can't breathe. And this went on and finally I said, I've had four lung collapses in the past, and that was due to a congenital um, birth defect in my late 20s. I had had operations for that. No, I'm fine now, but that seemed to occasion some concern, and whoever was kneeling on me stopped. Well, I was carried hogtied in um, two different stations and interrogated and photographed. Um, one young fellow was kindly at that point. He, my, my hair was in front of my face and he said, we're going to have to move your hair in order to take your picture. And I said, oh, thank you, that would be fine. And then he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, um, I know those cuffs are tight. Uh, we'll get them loosened as soon as we can. But um, that was the only moment when anybody departed from a role of being very aggressive and tough. One fellow knelt you know, like two inches from my face and said, since you've been combative, if you don't do exactly what you're told when we fingerprint you, we will pepper spray you. Do you understand? I mean, it makes me ask two questions. One, what were they really practicing for? I think Homeland Security these days um, may be paying the bills to outfit and train people to practice for some other kind of event of disruption. Maybe they're anticipating that there could be you know, a social volcano that blows within the United States. Or, as certainly is the case with military police in Iraq today, they engage in those kinds of highly aggressive, abusive, intimidating tactics, hog-tying householders and homes and you know, tying up the children. Um, not having any nuance to situations that are happening around them. But I think also um, the School of the Americas spokespeople say that they have reformed their curriculum so that they imbue the people from Central and South America who come to be trained at this military combat training school with the same regard for human rights and civil law that their own MPs have. Well, that troubles me. Judge G. Mellon Faircloth in Columbus, Georgia, has heard many, many cases now, uh, a great deal of testimony from some of the finest people in the world, uh, religious women who worked in Central America, young students whose 
hearts have been touched by the stories that they've been told about their own counterparts in Central and South America. Um, mothers who, and grandmothers who think of their own children and think of uh, women who are bereaved in other lands. And um, he listens patiently, but he always sentences people to um, uh, what he thinks is a befitting punishment. Quite often he has punished people with very high fines and six-month sentences are not that unusual. I was sentenced to three months. This was my first time actually crossing the line there and um, no fine. And I'm, I'm glad of that because I wouldn't pay the fine had I been given one. It seems to me when you go into the prison system, you there can begin to understand what's happening to some of the people who are um, the poorest of the poor in our own country, who often are the ones most likely to go to prison, and to better understand why did they end up in prison, what happened, by listening and by maybe offering a word of consolation. And I think it's an important place to be. Inside of a prison, um, it uh, gives you a very keen sense for how futile and how misdirected, how wrongheaded the whole prison system is, and, and gives one a sense of what it is that is um, so excluding people from having an economic stake in their own community that they'd get involved in an underground economy, which is, I think, how we could understand the drug trade. And then why is it that people feel like um, they've got to try to double or triple the amount of money coming into their households. Well, you've got these TVs on in households across the country, many of them poor households, where the kids are being told, you, you know, for your self-esteem, you have to have these sneakers and this coat and this cap and, you know, this line of perfume and these cosmetics. Well, you know, it's a very terrible thing that we would prey upon people who have some of the least... Uh, income, the least purchasing power, to feel that um, their self-esteem would be raised if they help you know, fill the coffers of major corporations who have very, very little stake or concern in the communities to which they might be selling these products. Uh, so I think it's important to go in and listen and try to understand and then see um, in the further invention of nonviolence how can we foster the idea that we're all part of one another. You're watching Chicago Independent Television. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. During the March 20th, 2004 anti-war protests in Chicago, the people of Chicago spoke out with music, dancing, and humor. The city of Chicago met this outburst of creativity by deploying thousands of riot police. Let's see what happens. Chicago in the media, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. It looked like a parade. We had the police, <laughs> the streets and sanitation people in front, and, and uh, I think we could have had a few more politicians. It would have been the, another parade on, on Clark Street. Parade. Yeah, March 20th parade. Uh, <laughs> All-American anti-war parade. All-American anti-war. <laughs> Chicago in the media, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. I got to do interviews with the protest organizers, and basically what it boils down to is if we would have gone down Michigan Avenue, they would have probably been arrested by the police.
You're on the air. Go ahead, please. I mean, even though, even though we can't, we can't, we can't say what we want. It's just, it's the feeling that 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 we're being stifled. You're watching Chicago Independent Television. You've been watching Chicago Independent Television, a project of the Chicago Independent Media Center Video Collective. The Independent Media Center is a growing worldwide network of journalists, citizens, activists, and everyday people working to bring the media into the hands of everyday people and away from corporate and commercial interests. To learn more, visit our website at chicago.indymedia.org. There you can find out about upcoming Chicago area events and how to help make your own media, including how to help make this very TV show. Thanks for watching. See you next time.